family. When I say what's the word, the word is it. When I say who are we, the word is family. When I say what's the word, the word is it. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by McDonald's. Gates open on Wednesday. Fans have poured into Legion Field ever since. The 71st Magic City Classic between Alabama State and Alabama A&M. Joe Davis on hand here in Birmingham. And as far as the SWAC standings are concerned, the winner of this game could control their own fate in the East Division. Bulldogs right now with a one-game lead. Teams arrived a couple of hours ago. The fans and the fans have made their way inside. We're just moments from kickoff now for a preview of the game. Let's go down to the field in the middle of it all with Jay Walker. Joe, obviously there's a lot of things taking place outside the stadium. But the most important thing about the Magic City Classic is the football game and what occurs here on the turf. I think the key to this game is going to be which quarterback running back duo plays the best. For Alabama State, look for them to force feed the ball to Isaiah Crowell. They feel he's been underutilized at times this season. For Alabama A&M, many people feel their quarterback, Deontay Mason, may be the SWAC player of the year. Look for the combination of Deontay Mason and Kadarius Slacy to determine if Alabama A&M emerges victorious here at the Magic City Classic. We're getting ready for kickoff. I'll join you in the booth in a minute, Joe. All right, hurry on up here, Jay. There's Anthony Jones, head coach for Alabama A&M in his 11th season. is 8-2 and two in Magic City Classic games. Reggie Barlow took over his alma mater in 2007. Now in his sixth season at the helm of the program. This Hornets won the toss, and they've elected to receive to begin this 71st Magic City Classic. Chance Wilson to kick it away to Jarrett Neely and Carnell Boyd. Alabama A&M controlling their own destiny to an East Division title. And a repeat trip to the SWAC championship. Alabama State, meanwhile, the pick to win the East. Needs to be close to perfect down the stretch to have a shot to get to the championship game. <laughs> 71st Magic City Classic game is underway, and Brandon Stewart, the starting middle linebacker, knocks it down. Alabama State to begin at the 32-yard line. There's Isaiah Crowell. The Georgia transfer. And this Alabama State offense led by Greg Jenkins, senior out of Dade Alabama City, Florida, Alabama who's had an up and down Alabama season. After a great start, went through a stretch where he was trying to do too much. Competitive by nature, sometimes tries to do too much, but he's settled in lately in this offense, really hitting its stride. 44 points a game over the last three games. They start off with Crowell straight ahead. And he gets three to make it second and seven. So again, Greg Jenkins, Troy Transfer, also the second leading rusher for this team. Alabama AM has said they want to make him beat them throwing the football. Can't let him get loose. On second and seven, back-to-back -to -back touches for Corral. The Georgia transfer's got a first down to the 44. Chris Irvin with a tackle, and Jay Walker's made it back up to the booth in time to take us through our impact players. Well, outside of Isaiah Crowell and Jenkins, where they want to run the football, for Alabama a and they've got to be on defense. Vernon Marshall has to play well. He's got to be all over the football field. Offensively for Alabama State, starts in the trenches. Offensive lineman, Taron Jones, a left tackle. He's got to open up big gaping holes. Back-to-back -back run plays to begin, so first down and 10 from the 44. Jenkins looking to throw for the first time today. Given time to find T.C. McWilliams, one of the top ten receivers in Alabama State history. Six and a half at second down. And you mentioned Tyron Jones, the left tackle for this Alabama State offense. Six feet, seven inches, 325 pounds. He's got NFL-type potential. If he can get that body going in the right direction and Crowell can hide behind him, they can have success running the football. 
Much more balanced lately with that improving run game. And on second down and four, Corral with his third touch of the day. It'll be third and one. Tim Tillman with the tackle. And give credit to offensive coordinator Fred Kice. For so many years, Alabama State was a true spread offense. When Crowell transferred into the school, they kept running him on the perimeter. I think now we see them going with the two tight end set for giving him a more balanced look, allowing Crowell to run effectively in between the tackles. Third down in a yard. Alabama State, the second best third down offense in the slack. And they got a Malcolm Cyrus who looks like he's short. A reach past the first down marker, but the side judge came running in and spotted him short as Reginald Bailey made the stop. Uh, right away, I thought that was a tough spot. It seemed to me as if Cyrus's body was across the 45-yard line, but as you mentioned, Joe, the side judge came in and gave him a short spot right away. This is going to be very close. So they will measure. And this opening drive for Alabama State. So that second effort for Malcolm Cyrus gets him enough. They convert on third and one. Good look at both coaches, Anthony Jones and Reggie Barlow. What a tremendous job both of them have done with their program. It's, it's unfortunate they have to play each other every year, and so often the winner ends up advancing to the SWAC championship. They've both done a really good job in elevating their programs. Unless there was movement up front from the offensive line, that'll be offsides. Preston Nelson got a good shot on Greg Jenkins. Head referee today is Anthony Johnson. Offside. Defense number 94, automated to the quarterback. Five-yard journey, first down. So Nelson called for the offsides. That'll move it up five, and it's first down and five. Anthony Jones, eight and two in Magic City Classic games, but he said the ones that you remember the most are the ones that you lose. Cyrus with his second touch, and Malcolm Cyrus is inside the 25. Julius Williams runs him out after a gain of 17. We saw Crowell running between the tackles. When they give the ball to Cyrus, he weighs a little bit less than Crowell. They want to attack the perimeter. Good outside blocking by T.C. McWilliams, number 11, to have the block downfield that really sprung Cyrus for the big game. Cyrus is sophomore. Crowell back in. Reigning SEC freshman of the year. Bounces off a of contact and makes it second and seven. Really been playing well lately. Uh-oh. There's a flag after the play. When I mean, you're Crowell, you've got to know that you're, you're a marked man. You know, you're a target. Teams are going to try and get in your head. He took a shot late, which sh possibly should have been a penalty, but the second guy always gets caught. Crowell would be very fortunate if he doesn't get ejected. It almost seems as if he took a punch. After the play, personal foul, offense number one. 15-yard penalty, second down. See, I mean, you're going to see where he gets hit, but you push somebody in the back there. When his back is turned to you, they've got to call that. That was Monte Rover, the middle linebacker from Alabama A&M, and was there a little bit late. But that's where you've got to control your emotions. You're in a big game here on a national stage. The team is driving the ball down the field. You cost your team 15 yards on what was a good run. Former Georgia running back was dismissed from the program this summer. He's caught on with Alabama State, but a costly penalty makes it second and 17 on this opening drive for Alabama State. Swag's top scoring offense with the ball at the 35. And a flag down. Ball start. Offense number 17. Taron Jones, the left tackle. Uh, look at these self-inflicted wounds. You've got to drive. You're moving right down the field. Game plan is working effectively in a position to put points on the board on your initial drive. Personal foul, then movement on the offensive line. Now 
You're looking at second and forever. And this drive, there's a good possibility of stalling right here at the 40-yard line. They empty it out, and Jenkins looking to throw underneath for T.C. McWilliams. They get a few back, but it'll still be third down and long thanks to these penalties. Right now, if you're Alabama A&M, you've got to be thinking Alabama State is going to try and spread you out formation. Watch Greg Jenkins. He's probably one of the best running quarterbacks in all of HBCU football. When he takes off and runs from the pocket, he's more like a running back playing quarterback. They said that's the one thing they can't have from him. They can't allow him to beat him with his feet. On third down and a quarter with a field. Here's Jenkins looking to run. Alabama A&M discipline and will run him out inside of the 30 after his six yard game making it fourth down and 16. Good job of spying Jenkins. You're going to see the middle linebacker Rover follow him. He's not going to win that foot race with them, but they kept the pursuit to force Jenkins to go out of bounds. And so they'll bring the field goal team out. Bobby Wenzig, who's just two of six this season, with a long of 37. This one from 47, it would tie a career long. Alabama State takes the lead as Wenzig nails it from 47. It's been a rough season for Wenzig in the field goal department, but a good start to the 71st Magic City Classic form. From 47, it's three to nothing Hornets in Alabama AM with its first possession. The judgment day is approaching. A final battle to show who has what it takes. On December 8th, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. ESPN New College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Alabama State strikes first and a 47-yarder from Bobby Wenzig. So Alabama A&M will come on offense for the first time. What a fun scene it is out there outside, huh, with all the cooking, tailgating, Every, fun going on. Everything that you could ask for in a college football atmosphere, they've got it. Food for days. Oh, my God. If I see another piece of pork, Joe, I don't know <laughs> what I'm going to do. So we see Alabama State with three on the opening possession. Now Alabama A&M on offense with this. A two-headed monster of Mason and Lacey. Yeah, and it was unfortunate that they had to settle for three points. They were matriculating down the field at a nice pace until the personal foul call on Isaiah Crowell. Then they had the offside. Reggie Barlow's Hornets are very fortunate to have three points, and they do have the lead. But you can tell their game plan is going to be to run the football in between the tackles with a heavy dose of Isaiah Crowell throwing a little Malcolm Cyrus for good measure. Terrence Pride and Brendan Johnson back to receive this kick from Bobby Wenzig. His 47-yarder has the Hornets on the board. And Johnson sliding down the field at the 18. So Alabama AM goes to work with Deontay Mason, senior out of Nashville, the SWAC's leader in passing efficiency, but trying to bounce back from his worst game. It's 12 and 27 for 158. And his first two interceptions of the season against Alcorn. And that's been the million dollar question. If you're the number two ranked team in HBCU football, how do you lose your homecoming game to an Alcorn State team? Give credit to Coach Jay Hopson for getting it done, but when you talk to him, they said the players just turned the ball over too much and they weren't focused. Well, they must be focused here tonight. First drive begins at the 19, and the SWAC's leading rusher, Kadarius Lacey. It's four yards. DeAndre Rashada with a tackle. Rashad DeJarnette, one of the wide receivers, our impact player for Alabama AM. He's just quite simply a big play type of guy. He's a guy that he's not going to catch a lot of things underneath. He's a home run hitter. They like to get him the ball in space and allow him to create big things. And on state defense for Alabama State, free safety, Keyron Riley. Ball hawk in the middle secondary, one of the best defenders in the country. There's 19 picks. You see that's tied for the most in FCS among active players. Opening possession for Alabama AM, second down and six. And a flag down. Alabama 
88 on the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Tight end Bobby Goldsby. Alabama AM lately has been better as far as penalties. So second down and 11. But the Swag stop rushing offense. Off of the fake, here's Mason, who's got nowhere to go. Lost a couple of yards with Brandon Roberts and Jimmy Daniels combining for the stop. Man, Quay Everett right. there as well, and it'll be third and long. And this is one where I think he should have given the ball to Kadarius Lacey. Lacey's going to win that matchup oh, in the hole, taking on Brandon Slater for the positive yardage. Poor decision by Deontay Mason to tuck that ball. So third down and 12, Alabama A&M, the best third down team in the SWAC, but a big part of that reason is because they're so good running the ball. Here in a spot where the run is probably not an option. Against a basic four-man rush, Terrence Pride off of the throw from Deontay Mason, but they get five yards when they need 12, and they've got to punt it away. One of the struggles there, you have a wonder when a and has struggled at time, it's been because of the conservative play selection. When you don't pick up positive yardage on first and second down, you put yourself in that type of bind. And I think Coach Jones, you saw him talking to Coach Mason on the sideline. I don't know how pleased he was with the starting quarterback during that initial series. Chance Wilson to punt it. And Malcolm Cyrus back to receive for Alabama State. Cyrus with a fair catch at the 38. So Alabama State gets three on its first possession, then forces a three and out. And the Hornets offense back to the field when you come back. That's me, L5085854P. p been playing the Magic City Classic since 1940, with the exception of 1943, 1944 for World War II. They've played it every year since. Alabama A&M has dominated recently, winning 12 of the last 14, but it's Alabama State off to a 3 to nothing lead. And after forcing a 3 and out with the football again. Top scoring offense in the SWAC. They've averaged 44 points a game over the last three weeks. And from the 38 off play action, Jenkins given time to take a shot for Demario Bell. And the true freshman is in. Touchdown, Alabama State. From 62. What a great job schematically to bait them in with the power run formation. Play action pass to Crowell. The free safety gets caught in his back pedal, Cedric Claiborne. Let's the wide receiver get behind him, and Derek Harris will beat on the coverage. Great play call, great throw by Greg Jenkins. And the Hornets are off to a hot start. Bell, a guy that now has just four catches during his career, recently moved from the slot to the outside receiver, and it's made all of the difference. Wenzig's extra point makes it 10 to nothing. Reggie Barlow said that he remembers back to his days playing in the Magic City Classic, his freshman or sophomore year, had a big catch. And in a game of this magnitude, as a young kid, it can give you incredible confidence. It can. I mean, legends are born during this football game here. This is almost like a state holiday here in Alabama. Fake it to Crowell here in Jenkins. We talk about his running ability. You don't throw a football any better than that. Gets him in stride. Gives him the ability to run away from the defender. Demario Bell presses that ball in and takes it to the house. But it was all set up by the uh, first series when they were able to run the football and gain Alabama a and to respect defensively. Then they set them up and they were right for the pick and for the play action pass. So 10 to nothing Alabama State and BCS countdown. Coming up on Sunday, we'll talk plenty about that. We work late into October. Hard to believe that we've reached this point of the season. Ryan Johnson back to receive the kick from Wenzig, who parks it in the end zone. 
So on Sunday, day after the dust is settled, our analysts will break down everything, key victories and defeats that took place on the college football gridiron, discuss their impact on the standings, and a look ahead of the key matchups for next week. That's BCS Countdown at 8.30 and at 9, presented by Vizio, Sunday on ESPN and ESPNU. And some big ones tonight. The Irish taking on Oklahoma. It's going to be a good matchup. You talk about defense with Notre Dame, their front seven, very physical. And I don't know if there's a hotter offense in the country right now than Oklahoma, considering the offensive beatdown they put on Texas a couple weeks ago. AM back to work and looking for a shot to Bobby Goldsby. The tight end all the way inside the 30. 49 yards from Deontay Mason to set up first down into Alabama State Territory. Same things that make you laugh, make you cry. Goolsby's going to be your tight end right here at the top of your screen. Gets a clean release. By the time Brandon Slater sees him in coverage, it's too late. Had that ball been thrown out in front of him, that would have been a touchdown. Instead, the Bulldogs have to settle for just a very large gain on first down. So after a three and out, they get a big play to begin this drive. Out of the I formation from the 28. Play clock down to five. And they'll burn a timeout. So Alabama State off to this 10 to nothing lead. They've struggled recently in this series. Two teams first met in 1924 in Huntsville. All time in Magic City Classics. 36-31-3 for Alabama A&M. And A&M last season jumped out to an early lead, 17-10, and they needed a block extra point late in the game to hold on 20-19. This game always comes down to the wire. I can't remember the last time it was decided by more than a touchdown. So we're going to be in for an interesting football game. Wow. One team is lead by four wins in the all-time series, five wins. That's just a swing in momentum. So they've been playing football down here for a while it just tells you how pretty much evenly balanced both of these programs are and both teams this week stress that they don't really care what's happened in the past in this rivalry it's all about this one which is big for both of these teams fighting at the top of the swag standings on first down drill to the backfield is Lacey loses four as Carlton Jones the defensive end sticks him that's what you want to tackle for loss on first down to slow down some of the momentum that the Bulldogs have built on that big play they had before. Carlton Jones, your defensive end, gets around the block from the fullback and punishes Lacey in the backfield. Preseason all swag selection, junior out of Shreveport, Louisiana. So now second down and 13. Alabama State showed a cornerback blitz too early. Mason saw it. Now throws the curl to Terrence Pride for a first down into the red zone. The sophomore out of Harvest, Alabama, gets 15. Saeed Lee, Brandon Roberts combined on the stop. So they're into the red zone, and here's how they've done. Brought to you by Verizon. Third in the swag. Pretty good ratio there, 17 touchdowns and 24 trips. The key is they don't turn the ball over. They haven't turned the ball over once in the red zone this season, which tells you they're a pretty good offensive unit. And they're fifth in the country, having turned it over just seven times this year. But three of those turnovers came last game in their first loss against Alcorn State. Off of the zone read, it's pulled by Mason, who manages to get two. Said Lee pushes him out, second and eight. Good look there, Deontay Mason, 6'3", 225 pounds, and this is the way you want to go out during your senior season. He's playing his best football of the year, as you mentioned, through his first interceptions on the season and the lost to Alcorn. He's got to put that behind him and find out what he's made of here in the Magic City Classic. Making his 30th career start today. And a roll to the wide side and an on-time throw to Rashad DeJarnette near the sticks. Darius Knox shoved him out. Looks like just short of the first down. Got seven, so third and one. DeJarnette's getting a lot of attention from the secondary of Alabama State. That was one of the few times that he's had one-on-one -on -one coverage. They've been playing him one underneath and one over the top. Tells you the type of respect they have for Rashad DeJarnette. 
This is where Alabama A&M has thrived in these third and short situations. Mason easily sneaks it for a first down. Tops in the swag, top 25 in the country in third down conversions. And this drive extended with first down and goal. So you've seen the play action pass, you've seen Mason run the football. Now it's Kadarius Lacey time. First and goal on the six yard line. I had to look for the big fella to get some loads right now, get some carries. Follow the fullback, Brian Nelson in the backfield. Lacey was the MVP of last season's Magic City Classic. Around Nelson to the corner for a touchdown. From six yards, you called it. You had to know it was coming. <laughs> he hadn't touched the ball on the drive. You get down in the red zone, you've got to know he's going to feel it. They just seal the edge, and he shows he's not just a power back. He can outrun linebackers to the corner, showing you a little burst of speed to get into the end zone. Swack's leading rusher with his sixth touchdown of the season to get Alabama AM on the board. Even the Bulldogs fans, something to cheer about late in this first quarter. Chance Wilson off of a fake. Terrence Pride can't get to the corner. It was an extra point that decided the game last year. And not sure whether it was a fake or a snap that Pride just couldn't get down, but either way, extra point fails. Kadarius Lacey behind the block from Brian Nelson gets into the end zone, and it's 10-6 in Birmingham. Fathead for real. Alabama AM on the board, 10 6 after the field extra point. Jay, what'd you see here? I think Terrence Pride panicked a little bit. You're going to see he doesn't field it cleanly, and he decided to call his own number. See, it's a slight bobble right there, but that's enough time to get off a PAT. The kicker doesn't have to have his full momentum going through the football. I think he thought he bobbled it enough and disrupted the timing so much that he had to take off and run. Alabama AM blocked an extra point in last season's Magic City Classic to hold on for a one point win. Remember that play moving forward in this one in a series where it's usually very tight in the fourth quarter. Wilson to send it away to Neely and Boyd. And it's Carnell Boyd from inside his own five. Alabama State, the worst kick return team in the SWAC, averaging just 14 yards a pop. And this drive begins at the 17. So now that you baited, you got the big touchdown off of play action, now you go back to running the football. Your initial game plan, pound the football so you can establish the play action pass later. Alabama State's going to be a little bit, Alabama A&M will be a little bit looser in their coverage because they got beat over the top. I'd go back to that two tight end formation and give the ball to Isaiah Crowell. Crowell back in after he went out after the personal foul penalty. Switch sides on the formation into a pistol. Take it off the left side with a flag down. Crowell down the sideline. All the way to the 35. Alabama State back on top it after a 42-yard game, but a flag in the backfield. And look at Greg Jenkins. He hasn't even gone with the rest of the crew down the field. He's standing on the 20-yard line just looking at the flag. He's got the feeling that this is coming back. Personal foul. Up in. The left tackle right guard. Top block. 15 yard, half a distance to the goal. First down. It's Jones on left tackle. Love it, right guard. And you see, good job by Crowell showing you the, the vision to see the crease to take off. And 
I mean, this is the, the penalty. Wow, I didn't, I didn't see that. Yeah, and the thing that hurts about it is, if it did happen, it didn't help the run at all. That wasn't the reason for that long game. The penalty makes it first down and 19 inside their own 10. Malcolm Cyrus comes in. Tim Tillman with a stop after he got two and a half. Now it'll be second and 17. Alabama State working against the nation's third ranked scoring defense. Already with 119 yards, a few minutes still left in this first quarter. Cyrus again hesitated, hurdled, and got three more, but it'll still be third and long. Third and about 14, all the result of the penalty. Yeah, the penalty is really hurting right now. This is one here I say again. Look out for Greg Jenkins, quarterback for Alabama State. Explosive runner. You can't relax just because Isaiah Crowell is not in the football game. If you're a linebacker for Alabama A&M, you're going to come in with a five wide receiver look to him, giving the empty backfield. Nobody in the middle field. Look at this bubble right here. If Jenkins can find that second level. He goes to the middle for T.C. McWilliams, who couldn't hang on. And it's fourth down. Defense coming from Jamal James. So sooner or later, they're going to find a way to get Greg Jenkins in this box right here running the football. They were very fortunate. They tried to get a wide receiver in there, but you see what they did? Okay, good job. They dropped him. They put a defensive lineman in there, so it was his own blitz look, so they actually didn't have the defensive tackle rush. They backed him up, but I don't like that matchup between the defensive tackle trying to catch Greg Jenkins running. First incompletion for either side. Wenzu, who's second in the country in punting, sends it off to Monteria Smith, who kind of signaled for a fair catch. Official didn't give it to him at first, but then gave it. A punt of 48 yards, just above his average. Alabama AM back to work. Offense loaded with experience, leading the SWAC, running the football, and with a big size advantage up front today, about 55 pounds per man. They're going to pound it. Then if that's not enough, they've got a running back that weighs 230 pounds. So he's a big load to bring down in Kadarius Lacey. Easy to see why they're so efficient running the football. Here's Lacey. Doesn't have great speed. Alabama State. Hemmed them in two yards. DeAndre Rashada, Brandon Roberts with the tackle, and it's second and eight. And that's what you're going to have to do if you're going to bring down Kadarius Lacey. Force him to bounce the ball to the outside, then go and chase him down as he tries to head to the sideline. But you better bring a buddy with you. Because <laughs> one man not going to bring down Kadarius Lacey. Six yard touchdown run for him has Alabama AM on the board. Off play action. They throw it back to him. His one receiving touchdown this season was on that same play, but this time Justin Mitchell disciplined on the screen to shut it down. What a great play by Justin Mitchell, the defensive tackle. He sniffs out this play. You're going to see him come from one of the interior positions there. And once he recognizes it, he's going to try and make the interception. You see him, he's looking for the interception. He sees the ball, but he's not going to get it. But he doesn't give up on the play. Gets a hand on Lacey and brings him down for the solo tackle. That's that engine you want to have from your defensive lineman. Boy, you talk about strength. He just threw Lacey down. Third down and nine. Pressure coming off his back foot, and it's fourth down. Went to the middle from Ontario Smith, but the pressure got to Mason and caused an errant throw. They brought the blitz up the middle, bringing Brandon Robertson, inside linebacker. Cyrus back for Wilson's punt. Second one of this first quarter for the senior from Huntsville. Line drive that'll give Cyrus a chance back into his 12. Cyrus 
after a punt of 50. It's a return of 16. Let's take a look at the Sheridan top 10 right yeah, now. As he's moving to late on Tolburn. A Division II school at the top. Winston-Salem State, not only the number one in the Sheridan broadcasting poll, but they're ranked number two nationally in Division II polls. So head coach Cornell Maynard's got the Rams thinking national championship there in Winston-Salem. And Central's been one of the surprises. Nobody predicted North Carolina Central to be the number five team in the country at this stage of the game. Coach Henry Frazier's has a very good Eagles football team. Reggie Barlow's team picked the win the East in the SWAC, needing to be perfect here down the stretch to have a shot. Crowell straight ahead for five on first down. The Georgia transfer. He's gotten in better shape recently. And he didn't decide to come to Alabama State until late in the summer, and the condition he was an issue since he's improved in that area. He's gotten much better on the field. And you can tell he's staying on the field after the five-yard, four-yard game where early in the season. After a run, he would take himself out. Popped at the line of scrimmage by Denzel Cotton, who missed the Alcorn State game, and they're expecting him to give a big boost returning from that ankle injury. You mentioned how the Bulldog defense is not big, so if you're not going to be big, you've got to be quick. Hide behind the backers and make a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Denzel Cotton, 6'1", 220 pounds, so he's got to use his speed some great big tackles. They get this third and seven in before the first quarter comes to a close, and Corral with a screen, and Blackers in front into AM territory. Cotton shoves him out after 27 yards to cap an exciting first quarter here at Birmingham. Alabama AM has won 12 of the last 14 Magic City Classics, but it's Alabama State with the lead after 15. Alabama and M started 6-0, now 6-1. Both these teams coming off losses. Big game today, Legion Field. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by the Venture Card from Capital One. Earn double miles you can actually use. Well, if you leave the Magic City Classic hungry, something's wrong. Yes. There's so much food. I mean, you could like smell the, the charcoal miles away. What do you think about it, Joe? Your first Magic City Classic? It's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Pretty accurate word. People getting in here Wednesday for this and with the food choices. Endless. You're going to head down to the field at some point here early on in the second quarter. Give us a different perspective from down there. First play of the second quarter is going to be a sack and a fumble. Denzel Cotton. Alabama AM gets the takeaway in great field position. Trying to do the play action. But just Greg Jenkins, poor football protection there. You're going down that sack. You've got to secure the football. Huge break for the Bulldogs. Corey Johnson forced it. And it all started with the pressure there. Edward Mosley getting on. Jenkins ahead of schedule. Just slides in the football. Big play by the Bulldog defense. Cotton, who missed those two games. He missed one game because of the ankle injury returning this week. And making a big impact early on. Here's Lacey. Already got one touchdown today. Has some room. Gets a block from Mason. Touchdown. 29 yards for a second of the day. You want to play football in the NFL, you must show good balance. Lacey's an NFL prospect. The initial hit doesn't bring him down. He bounces, gets the balance, and watch him set up the block. Going to the outside, and then he sees the cutback lane, takes advantage of it. Great vision, great balance. Darius Lacey showing you why he's the leading rusher in the spot. about a pancake block for Deontay Mason? Downfield. Quarterback, I keep telling you, Joe. Love quarterbacks that. are athletes. Chance Wilson's extra point. Makes it 13-10, and Alabama a and has its first lead. All 
given them an opportunity because of this forced fumble by Corey Johnson that was recovered by Denzel Cotton. Jay heading down to the field. We'll check in with him down there when we come back. As you can see. Alabama State with the first 10. Alabama A&M with 13 in a row to take its first lead. Jay is outside now. All right now. Everybody's having a good time in the parking lot. The teams are excited. The band's got it going on. But at the end of the day, if you ask Coach Barlow and Coach Jones, what's it all about? It's all about this. The Eddie Robinson Trophy for the winner of the SWAT Championship. Will it be Alabama A&M or will it be ASU? Well, Reggie Barlow's squad hasn't won a SWAC championship since 2004. Anthony Jones trying to get his team back to the SWAC championship game for the second straight year. Lost to Grambling last season. He's 8-2 and two in these Magic City Classic games, but he says the ones that he remembers are the ones that he loses. Won his first two as head coach, then lost one, and said people lose their minds over it. Stick with it the entire year. Malcolm Cyrus fumbles and then picks it up, and will take it to the 17 with a flag behind him. Anthony Johnson has been busy early on. Doing the return. Blocking the back. Receiving team, number 21. Half distance to the goal. First down. Fourth penalty already for Alabama State. College Football Daily is your destination for all the latest reports and comprehensive analysis. Our experts will dissect all the storylines and breaking news each day. That's College Football Daily weekdays at 1 on ESPNU. Alabama State back to work on offense. Excellent first quarter, but then the first play of the second quarter, Greg Jenkins was sacked and fumbled, leading to an Alabama AM touchdown. Rodney Cross with his first touch of the day. On to the 11, and we go down to Jay. What's going on down there? Oh, there's a lot going on, Joe. The fans, the crowd, everybody's excited. But one of the things I do notice from here in the sideline, which you don't get the feel for in the booth, how much movement Alabama A&M does on defense. You don't get a lot of the quarterback out of your pre-snap move because you see right now they're lining up six yards from the line of scrimmage, and now they're moving and they're shifting, and they're always active. Very tough for a young quarterback to get a lot out of his read. Jenkins off of the pulley over the short game. They're undersized, but they're fast, they're physical. Oh, tell him with a stop with Reginald Bailey. And then you figure that moving around is something they can oh, use to overcome the lack of size as well. And that's something that defensive coordinator Bronski Towns has done for years. They don't go out and recruit 300 pound defensive tackles. They look for the guys that are 270 pounds that can move, and their linebackers are almost like strong safeties in normal defenses. They know how to tackle, they're fundamentally sound. They wrap up. Our penalty, second down. They're an illegal formation penalty, so it'll be. I guess the play won't count, they're saying. Sticks will show second down. Officials. Third down. So the play will stand with the penalty being declined, making it third and six. Welcome Cyrus back in at running back. Jenkins dances out of the pocket. Eyes downfield. Buying some more time. Throwing for Landon Jones for a first down. What incredible work by Greg Jenkins to use his legs to keep the play alive. Wow, we talk about his ability to scramble out of the pocket. That looked like Fran Tarkenton changing directions, going all the way across the field. The AM coaches are wondering, was that ball caught? That's a close one. That ball was behind him. Did he secure it cleanly before it hit the turf? 
Jenkins five of six now. Call will stand and they go downhill with Cyrus getting a C. Cyrus with six on first down. Sophomore out of Atongaville, Alabama. Change of pace to Crowell. Jamel Morris with the tackle out of the secondary. There is no replay in this game. It's Alabama AM upset with the call, but no chance to challenge. And George, a quarterback down here on the field. I'm chomping at the bit to attack the scenes of Alabama AM. If you can get a wide receiver past a linebacker, you can hit him for a big play. Jenkins using his legs again. First down to the 34. Bronski Towns, the defensive coordinator for Alabama AM, said they've got to make Jenkins throw the ball. They can't afford to let him beat him with his legs. And I don't know what to do in that situation there. I mean, it seemed to me that Jenkins' mind was set that he was going to run the football. He glanced down the field briefly. He was going to take off. And so, for, so often you see these mobile quarterbacks, they believe more in their legs than they do their arms. He's got to be patient and stay in the pocket. From the 34, Cyrus with another touch and another first down hold to midfield. 14 yards, his longest carry of the day. And Alabama stayed in rhythm offensively. Now, did you see the block there by the left guard, Damian Love, the true freshman from Millbrook, Alabama? He absolutely pummeled. The defensive tackle trying to make the play. You got a good look at it down there. It's say, physical. Say down in the field right now. Pressure comes from AM. Jenkins trying to make him pay, but cannot get away from Corey Johnson. And Denzel Cotton there as well. Cotton recovered the fumble on the previous possession. And you get the appearance he's got happy feet. I mean, there's nothing there that's forcing him. There are collisions in front of Jenkins, but he's just making up his mind he's going to take off and run, and that really puts your offense in a bind because you're not letting the play develop. Well back in for second down and nine, and this Alabama A&M defense, third in the country, swarms around him with a flag down. Back to the line of scrimmage. Offense 65. 10 yard penalty. Second down. It's Edmund Davis, junior out of Montgomery's Carver High School. Five penalties on Alabama State so far, and we saw during that first quarter penalties kill a drive for the Hornets. Jenkins in this offense hoping that it doesn't happen again as the result of a penalty on a drive that was looking sharp. Another flag down. Looked like Taryn Jones left tackle maybe came out of his stance. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's the second time we've seen the big fella Jones move off sides. You've got a game of this magnitude, this nature. Got to be smart mentally. Remember the snap count. They had it first down and 10 in midfield. Now second and 24 from the 35. Jenkins stepping into his throw for T.C. McWilliams for a first down. Needed 24 and got 25 to one of the top 10 receivers in Alabama State history. And that's what we talked about earlier. You can attack the seam. It seems as Alabama A&M is just lining up a linebacker on McWilliams in the slot. If you get around the reroute, they clear out one guy. Look at that nice gap right there, a place to deliver the football. Good throw by Greg Jenkins. So they convert the second down and very long. Now Corwell slides out of a tackle in the backfield, turns nothing into a first down gain of eight. Jamel Morris finally with his stop. Derek Harris there as well. That should have been a one or two yard loss. He's a special talent. You know, really good running backs are not going to come down, and the great ones make something when there's nothing there at all. And Isaiah Crowell showing you why he was the number one running back prospect in the country his senior year in high school. Second and short, Corral again with a first down inside the 25. 
five. Anything you notice down there, Jay, that you don't notice from up here as far as, far as Crowell goes? Yeah, I think that, that initial burst. I mean, right there, when you see him up top, he seems as if he's really taking his time, setting up his blocks, but he's moving really fast, which is very tough to do, to set up the block and have that great vision ahead of time. But when he needs to turn on the jets and turn on the gas, it doesn't take him long to accelerate from zero to 60. He gets a break. Malcolm Cyrus comes in on the stretch play, getting a stop block in front to get seven on first down. Robert Nelson over to make the tackle. This has been a nice one-two punch with Corral and Cyrus in this first half. And you just have to wonder, when's Alabama going to, A&M going to figure it out that they're running Cyrus to the outside, and when Crowell's in there, he's the heavy load back. He's the one that's running tough between the tackles. Said Cyrus has had a great attitude. He would have been the starter had Corral not transferred, but they've developed a good friendship. Here's Cyrus again. Met in the hole. Fell forward for a yard. Ryan Jackson plugged that hole and sets up third and short. You know, this is the part here where I'm really enjoying being on the sideline because when you're inside the red zone, there are collisions on every play, and this is where you can tell how physical a football team is when you've got to play smash mouth football on third and short. Third down and one. Holds the box and some motion before the snap to change the strength of the formation for Rodney Cross to get a first down. Robert Nelson with a stop, but he got two to move the chains. D did you notice the adjustment that Alabama State made there? We talked about how Alabama A&M likes to give you different looks on your pre-snap read. So what do you do? You come out, line up in one formation, and then shift both tack the tight end, both tight ends on the other side. They don't have a chance to re-shuffle their formation. First down Hornets. I like the guy, the decision to make a shift. Here's Crowell. Philip Harvey made the tackle after three, second and seven for the Georgia transfer and the reigning SEC freshman of the year. Could still get a first down without scoring. They need the two. And they go back to Corral to the short side. He's got a convoy for six. Chris Gilzean, the fullback, led the way. Nine yards and Alabama State back in front. They were tired, Joe. They were tired. You could tell they started getting up to the line of scrimmage with their hands on the hips. They got them with the quick snap, not giving them a chance to catch their breath. And Crowell's showing you that flash. I'm telling you, down here on the field level, it did not take him long to get into the end zone. But Justin Robinson and Chris Gilzean blowing up the defense to pave the way for Crowell. 11th touchdown of the season. And after the, ex after the extra point from Bobby Wenzig, it's 17-13. Crowell, 28 yards on the drive, caps it off from nine. This had a mistake with an impressive 93-yard drive to get back in front, Jay Walker. Oh, very impressive. I was on the Alabama A&M sideline during that drive. I came over here to the Alabama State sideline. And you know what I saw? Quarterback Greg Jenkins taking the time to go to each one of his offensive linemen and say, good job, great job, keep it up. That's what we need. That senior leadership, he realized that last drive was all about the running game. And Greg Jenkins is paying homage to his offensive line. It's an offensive line with a 60-pound advantage per man on running is a small Alabama A&M defensive front. And 13 run plays out of the 15 plays on that drive. Lensing second touchback of the day. There's a new late night show on ESPNU. Perfect night after sports day. U9, ESPN's first late night entertainment show. Weeknights at midnight on ESPNU. Joe, I cannot imagine calling a play in the huddle. They make a lot of noise. They like the party. But wow. I see why the officials are always enforcing the <laughs> being respectful to the opponent. If Alabama and them were to call a play with the band playing full tilt, you wouldn't be able to hear the call. You're right down there in front of the Alabama State band. I don't know how you can hear yourself think. Drive begins at the 25 for Alabama A&M. Gadarius Lacey, who's got two touchdowns today, has a loss of two. Ran into Edward Mosley. Late flag comes in. Oh. 
We've had one personal foul penalty already today. It was on Isaiah Crowell. Anthony Johnson discussing this one with his crew. After the play, personal foul, defense number 40. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. First time. That's Brandon Slater, junior linebacker in Alabama State, shooting itself in the foot in this first half. Seven penalty, 69 yards of penalties. <laughs> David Isabel comes into the game at quarterback here. Beg your pardon, it's still Mason who's going to take off for three. Hey, Joe, you know I'm always telling you I went to Howard, right? Oh, yeah. And so, you know, where do you think a Howard guy's going to end up during the game? You give me a microphone, right, an opportunity to tour, to I've got to go find the cheerleader. He's going to Serena. We talk about the different things going on in the Albion. Alabama State, their cheerleaders got spirit. And right now, they've got a four-point lead. It's, it's a Howard thing, Joe. It's a Howard thing. Okay. You wouldn't know about that. <laughs> Boy, it, you know, people talk about it being hard to be a TV announcer having a producer in your ear. How about having the cheerleaders and the band in your ear trying to work? You're making it look easy. Hey, hey we're taking the Sky Show on the road, baby. I'm going to be throughout this whole stadium. If you're going to give me free room <laughs> to show you the Magic City Classic, I'm going to show you the Magic City Classic. Well, Isabel is in the game, but he's not at quarterback. He's lined up as a running back with Mason. And on first down and five after a Alabama State penalty, Mason will throw underneath. It's Tory Smith who averages 19 yards a reception, getting 17 to move the chains into Alabama State territory. Andre Rashada with a tackle and another late flag. Jay, did you have a good look at this one? There was a big pile there, and the flag came in extremely late. I will tell you, there was a, not, a lot of jawing going on between the secondary for Alabama State and the receivers from Alabama AM. Personal foul, offense number 80. 15 yard penalty. The results started play for the first time. So Torrey Smith gets 17 on the reception and then kills 15 of it with his own personal foul penalty. And what it was, I mean, he had a good run, and at the end of that run, the safety for Alabama State came up and tried to deliver a blow, but actually he got the worst end of it. And that was Kewan Riley. So what do you do in that situation? He was doing the trash talk at the bottom of the pile, and that's why they called the penalty on him. Smith, a veteran of this group. The first personal foul on Alabama AM today. Still get the first down because it was a post-play penalty. But it moves it back into their own territory from the 44. Mason against the blitz will dump it off for Lacey, who stiff arms Leland Baker to free him up for seven. Second and three. That looked like that could have easily been a horse collar tackle over on the sideline. We talk about Lacey's size in order to bring him down. The defender left his feet. Lacey's very fortunate he didn't get hurt and on the play. He's been battling an ankle injury for much of the season. Anthony Jones said there should be no excuse. It really hasn't been. Leading the swack and rushing. Two touchdowns today. Alabama State trying to come up with a stop here around midfield with a 17-13 lead. And now a timeout. Second one of the half. For Alabama and M. We'll take the break with them. Good one going on here at Birmingham. Next gears. All right. After all this hard work, Skywalker needs some refreshment. I'm gonna walk over here to a full-scale bar in the parking lot. Oh, excuse me, sir. Whoa! Look what I bump into. Alabama AM legend John Stallworth. 
What are you doing at the Magic City Classic? I'm here to see Alabama and them win, of course. Are they going to win? They are going to win. Are you sure? I am positive they're going to win. Well, if the Hall of Famer says it, I got to go. No, I'm not. I hope it's a good game. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win the football game today? Oh, Alabama State, without a doubt. Hornets all the way. Whoa, Alabama State legend, Eddie Robinson. Eddie Robinson, Magic City, does it get any better? Oh, it's always a great time. You know that, Jay Walker. That's why you come back every year. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, Jay, Andy Robinson finished up his time at Alabama State 1992 as a linebacker in the NFL. And, of course, John Sauer, four-time Super Bowl champion for the Steelers in the 70s and the 80s. From midfield, second down and four for Alabama a and Brendan Johnson into the game running back. And it's Deontay Mason to pull it out of his gun and get back to the line of scrimmage. So it's third and four coming up. We talk about the running ability of Greg Jenkins. Deontay Mason is very effective when he decides to run the football as well. But in these situations, normally you see Coach Anthony Jones try and get the ball to DeJarnett. Pre-snap read shows that they've got one-on-one -on -one coverage with DeJarnett matched up against number seven, Saeed Lee. To the near side of your screen. On third down and four, Mason is pressured, and he will go down. It was Demetrius Strong and Edward Mosley combining. Fourth down. Both quarterbacks like to run the football well, but they get gang tackled there. Good job by the Hornets pursuing the football. Alabama State third in the country at the FCS level as far as tackles for loss per game. Chance Wilson to punt it. <laughs> Alabama State's defense coming up with a stop. Getting the ball back to the offense. Welcome Cyrus for the fair catch. Jay, where are you at now? Well, you know, Joe, I don't do special teams. So I had an opportunity to take a playoff, and <laughs> I decided to find a suite here at the Magic City Classic. I'm on a white leather sofa. I've got good company here. There is a leather sofa in the end zone of the parking lot. This is the Magic City Classic. I'm going to keep moving. i got to stay on the go. Let's get back to some football, Joe. A leather sofa, and you can see the game right there? I can see it all, and as a matter of fact, on the Jumbotron, I can even see you, Joe Davis. That's pretty sweet. Inside of four minutes left in this first half. Jenkins throws the hits. Landon Jones has got his second catch of the day. Four and a half on first down. Jenkins eight of nine. Hands off to Cyrus. Preston Nelson with a stop after a gain of one. And third down and short coming up. Nelson, a senior out of Bessemer, Alabama. Part of this undersized defensive line. Alabama State would like to be able to punish with an offensive line averaging 60 pounds more per man today. On third down and three, Jenkins rolling out, pressured from behind, will heave it out of bounds. And Alabama State will punt it away. And that's what you're not going to do against Alabama A&M. You are not going to be able to run a small, outrun a small, quick-oriented defense to the sideline. So there's no point really rolling out your quarterback because they're going to get to him in a hurry. And one thing we've noticed, it seems as if there's been a shift. Alabama State came in with the game plan. We're going to run Crowell. We're going to run Crowell. Power back. Past two series, it seems as if with that last series, they got away from that a little bit, Joe. Jay's got a great view of it right now, watching this second quarter from down in the field. Rugby style kick from Wenzig. Line drive is taken by Smith. And Torrey Smith takes it into Alabama State territory. Caught him off guard, but he was able to look up just in time. And bring it back to the 35.
Why do I like this new Buick Verano? It lets me audible. OnStar, how can I help you? Check, check, 287, orange barrel, reroute. Sending new route. Stayed up 17-13 with two and a half left in this first half. And coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, Matt Chick, Jason Seahorn, Charles Arbuckle will take you through all the stories from today. The Gamecocks lose Marcus Lattimore. Florida and Georgia with a big one today. Texas Tech and Kansas State with the top 25 matchup. Speaking of halftime, Jay is right in the middle of the group that's going to provide the entertainment here at halftime. Joe, I told you I'm taking you everywhere. You don't know where I am right now. I'm getting hyped up in here. Are we ready? Are we ready? Where are we going? white leather couch and a band down there to dance around with. I've got a blue plastic chair and Barry and Rick are stat guy and spotter to dance around with. It's not a fair deal. <laughs> you got to make it all happen. You got to make it all happen. Lacey gets pounded in the backfield by Jimmy Daniels, who's now got 11 and a half tackles for loss this season, top 10 in the country. It's an Alabama State defense that came in with high expectations this year, but they've struggled. Early on, it was guys trying to do their own thing against Jackson State most recently. Heat coordinator Cedric Thornton said there was a lack of energy. There's not been any lack of energy today for this defense. Six tackle for loss for the unit. Inside of two minutes, and Mason looking downfield. Stepping out of the tackle with a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Dijarnat, the intended receiver. Illegal formation. Offense, five in the backfield. Penalties declined. Third down. A bit of a sloppy first half as far as penalties. And they came out on fire. Both teams executed, but so often what happens when you're playing against one of your rivals, after they come out with the, the trick plays and the play acts and things of that nature, you have to go back to playing solid fundamental football, and nobody knows you better than your rival opponent. Both these teams insisted this week that it's not a hatred, it's more of a mutual respect. I don't agree with that, Joe. I know I almost started a riot when I got in there with the AM band because the Alabama State band was looking at me crazy like, you better put us on TV too. Yeah, right. <laughs> Third and 14, pressure coming off of the hands of Monteria Smith. And Alabama AM unable to capitalize on incredible field position. Fourth down and 14, punt team coming out. Good they're kind of getting away from that flow. This is one of the most explosive offenses in the country. And when Alabama A&M is rolling, they're scoring a lot of points. But the question has become when the offense dies, the defense is always going to be there. That's been the constant. But sometimes their offense just disappears at times. In a game like this, when you trail them by four, you've got to take advantage of good field position when you have it. Chance Wilson. I angled kick. Away from Malcolm Cyrus. And they will down this at about the 25. ESPN College football available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device via watchespn.com and the watch ESPN app. And the back judge kept running forward there. Where are they going to say it went out of bounds at the 30, Jay? Well, it gave him a favorable spot if you're Alabama State, give him a better field position there. And right now, this is what you look for. If I'm Greg Jenkins as a quarterback, I'm thinking, yes, I've got a four-point lead, but that's not enough. We've got a minute and 37 seconds. It's time to step on the gas and put some points on the board before halftime to make this at least a touchdown lead. A net punt of 11 yards. From the 30, Rodney Cross. Up to the 34. Vernon Marshall with the tackle. Alabama State all three timeouts working inside of a minute and a half. And they should get it going. I, I don't understand that you're going to run the ball and then you're going to let the clock tick. I mean, you, you've got to be aggressive. In this situation here, you don't know how this game's going to turn out. You've got to be aggressive. 
They fake the hits and go for Landon Jones off of the double move. Down the sideline, inside the 10. 57 yards. There you go, Jay Walker. That, that's being aggressive. That's what you've got to do there. Get them on a double move there. Good job of setting it up, and Jenkins did a fantastic job of delivering, and that's their go-to guy. You knew it would be a matter of time before they found a way to get Landon Jones involved in the offense. He's going to say, you're down there. Why don't you go tell Coach Barlow what you think he should do? Now first and goal, and here's Cyrus back to the line of scrimmage. Now one minute, but again, all three timeouts for Alabama State, and they'll use their first right now. I'm not sure what that was that he was just kicking out. Guess he's maybe a bulldog. It is. <laughs> Playing this game at Legion Field, open in 1927. For less than a half million when it opened. Capacity of about 21,000 when it opened up. Underwent many renovations and additions over the years with Bear Bryant becoming the winningest coach in college football history here in 1981. SEC championship game here in 1992. And other sports here as well. Olympic soccer in 2005. And bowl games as well for them. The BBVA Compass Bowl. Really a great venue here in downtown Birmingham. Just you know, over 71,000 now. You know, one of the changes that you've seen in college football, they don't play as many neutral site games anymore. It's become more of a home and home like they've done here in the state of Alabama, Auburn, Alabama. That's a home and home series. Really makes you appreciate a good neutral site game like the Red River Rivalry still play in Dallas every year between Oklahoma and Texas. We've had the SWAC championship game here since 1999 now. Second down and goal. Alabama State trying to add to this four point lead. And Roland Jenkins, who's got some room to run, flag down. He's in, but a flag down. Back at the 10-yard line. And the Hornets again shooting themselves in the foot with the penalties. Eighth penalty of the first half on Alabama State. Emotions are running high. Teams are thinking with playing with adrenaline rather than using their heads and thinking it out. But there's no flag on the play for an illegal block below the way. The results of the play is a touchdown. All right, so it's not the eighth penalty. It's the third touchdown of this first half for the Hornets. Greg Jenkins with his eight touchdown run. This one from nine yards, and it's a 10 point lead. Extra point from Wenzig. Makes it 24 13, Alabama State. I mean, it's a good job of Jenkins of getting there. They're going to call that a chop block, but they determined that it was not a chop block. I think they got the right call there. And Jenkins just showing you the athleticism rolling into the end zone to deliver a dagger to the Bulldogs. 27 of the 33 touchdown drives for Alabama State this year have been under three minutes. What, what does that tell you? Quick strike. Quick strike ball. <laughs> Personified. 44 seconds here for an Alabama AM team that is much better running the football than they are throwing it. We'll need really good field position with a great return to consider trying to put a drive together. Pride, his own end zone. Only back to the 16. 
So 40 seconds left of running offense. You don't think they'll try to put a drive together, do you? No, I think, you know, you don't, you don't do it right now. You have to regroup. You try and maybe get a screen to get Lacey in some space, see if you can create something. But I would expect very conservative play calling from Anthony Jones right now on this drive. They've got to figure out, they've got to get into the locker room and figure out how they're going to race this 11 point deficit. And you're not going to do it in 40 seconds before the half. Alabama AM will have the ball to begin the second half. Go to work from the 16 with Lacey. Bottled up for a good chunk of the half. Does have two touchdowns and got free once, but Alabama State's defense has been solid. Saeed Lee with the tackle on the gain of three. Just solid. And we talked about Alabama AM having the defense that everybody knows about, but I think you're right. Defensive coordinator Cedric Thornton has done a good job in his preparation for this Alabama AM explosive offense, which has been pretty much minimized here in the first half. So that'll bring this first half to a close in an Alabama A&M defense third in the country giving up just 13 points a contest gives up 24 during the first half. Bulldogs have won 12 of the last 14 Magic City Classics but they'll have to come back from a two score deficit in order to do it today down to the field with Jay who's with coach Barlow. Coach, your thoughts on the first half? Well, this is an exciting game. You know, Magic City Classic, both teams are playing with a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Um, you know, both offenses are doing well, so uh, should be good in the second half. 24-13, you guys got the 11-point advantage. <laughs> Offensively, what's your mindset going to be? We still want to be aggressive. Our offense, we want to play fast, fast, fast. And our quarterback understand that. Our offensive line understand that. We're going to come back out in the second half and try to go fast. We're going to keep the up-tempo, Joe. Like Coach Barlow said, should make for a very interesting second half. Swag's top offense, 24 points during the first half. 24-13, Hornets in front. Let's go to the studio for the State Farm Halftime Report. We'll have that coming up. Kadarius Lacey, 30 yards for the score. Alabama State up 11 at the half. This halftime report is presented. Welcome back to the State Farm Halftime Report. Mario Bell, 62 yards on the touchdown reception. AM trails Alabama State 24 to 30. Alabama State, the band plays on here. As they lead 24 to 13 at the half. This halftime. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by McDonald's. 24 to 13, Alabama State with the lead, trying to get just their third win against Alabama AM in the last 15 seasons. Jay's down in the field with Alabama AM head coach Anthony Jones. Coach Jones, your team goes into halftime down by 11. What did you tell them in the locker room? I mean, there's no need to panic. We made made some huge mistakes in that first half, particularly towards the end of the game, uh, and they took advantage of it. So what we had to do now, we knew uh, it would take more than 24 points to win this game. So we're going to have to come back. We made our adjustments. We'll see how we do. What have they done to surprise you? Nothing. I mean, they're a good football team. We knew they were a good football team. Um, I think... <laughs> I, I think they're running the ball a little more than I thought they would, uh, particularly having more success running against us than I thought they would. But other than that, um, no, nothing really. All right, it's going to be an interesting second half. Joe, back to you. All right, Jay. It was the first half of runs. Alabama State got out to a 10 to nothing lead. Of runs. Alabama State got out to a 10 to nothing lead. Then Alabama AM used the game's only turnover to take its first lead before the Hornets finish with a couple of touchdowns to take that 24-13 lead into the break. Jay Nyer with a special guest. Magic City Classic, you never know who you're going to discover. Who is this I've walked into? Oh, the name is Bootsy, baby. <laughs> and the better the funk you, my dear. Are you, tell, describe your experience here at the Magic City Classic. Man, this has been off the hook ever since this morning. We did the parade, and I mean, the people just are so into it. I mean, this is definitely a classic. <laughs> One of a kind, man. Uh, the funk for real, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. and, and give me the chance you had to get the crowd going. What did you ask them for? We want the funk. Uh, uh, yeah, that phone. Say what? Uh, we want the phone. Oh, come yeah. on, come on. 
Gotta have that funk. funk. Joe, you need to get with the funk, baby. Gotta get with the funk, Bob. I guess so. Now are the running backs we were looking at during the first half. Top two running backs in the SWAT. Corral with 52 yards and his score. Lacey with a couple of touchdowns, but he was bottled up for a good chunk of that half. 38 yards on his eight touches. And Alabama AM will have the ball to begin this second half. An offense loaded with experience. And you heard Anthony Jones say they should not be overly concerned about the deficit coming into this second half. Pride and Johnson back to receive Wenzig's kick. 71st Magic City Classic out of the second half. And Pride bringing it out of his own end zone with some space, with some speed to the 25. Tackle made by Rodney Cross. The Bulldogs will begin at the 25 yard line. Just 125 yards during that first half, most of which came through the air for the SWAC's top running offense. Dante Mason coming off his worst game of the season, was efficient during that first half. Seven of ten, no touchdowns, but no picks one week after he threw his first two interceptions of the season. To begin the second half out of the eye with Kadarius Lacey, the tailback. And a rollout on first down. Mason around Lacey's block, settles for a yard, and in second and nine, Brandon Slater forced him out of bounds. Jay, you are all over the place. I'm back. Well, now, what is this? I leave the booth for a little while, and all of a sudden, you think you run the place now, right? No, no, no. No, listen, I saw you down there on the white leather couch and just thought I might as well make myself comfy up here, too. <laughs> Look pretty good down there, though. Come on, rookie. What do you think? Alabama A&M and this 11-point deficit, a little bit surprising. Yeah, and I think, you know, I understand what Coach Jones was saying when he said we knew it was going to take more than 13 points to win the game. Alabama State, at times, their offense just completely falls flat. And I think that's what he's hoping for, that the defense will slow down their offense and we just score two to three more touchdowns in the second half and we can win. Now on the other side, Alabama State, I was excited to hear Reggie Barlow say, no, we play up-tempo, we play fast, we're going to keep our foot on the gas pedal and really try and put more points on the board. Well, a good start for the Bulldogs with an improvement on third down. The best third down offense in the SWAC was just one of five in the first half. And on third down and four, looking to the short side, throwing, it's broken up by Rashada. Darren's pride, the intended receiver. I think Mason wanted to pump and go. There was some miscommunication, but with, we only need five yards. Take the hitch route. That's what they're giving you. It should be one, two, three, get rid of it. He did a little pump there, and that allowed the defensive back to come back into play. The first down was there, but that little pump hitch at the top of his drop cost them the opportunity to get the third down conversion. And it means a three and out for this offense that at times today has looked lethargic. You see, so and you, you, know, you just see Coach Jones on the sideline really getting into Mason right now. you got to have game management as a quarterback. Chance Wilson with his fifth punt of the day. Here's Malcolm Cyrus making a couple of men miss. And he'll get into the 46 for the flag down. The Mario Ross with the tackle on special teams. Alabama State had seven penalties in the first half. A lot of them really cost them. An 11 point lead despite those seven penalties. You wonder where this game could be had they not shot themselves in the foot so frequently. During the return, block in the back, receiving team, number 25, 10 yard penalty from the spotted foul, first down. Corey Davis called for the penalty, so instead of the ball being at the 46 to begin their first possession of the second half, it'll be at the 32. One thing I did notice being down on the field, playing conditions are deteriorating quickly. The wind is starting to pick up, as well as the temperature is dropping. That normally does not favor the team that likes to throw the football as often as Alabama State. Isaiah Crowell, the Georgia transfer, touches it on the first play of the second half. It surges across the 35-4-5. 12 carries and 57 yards now. Monte Rover made the tackle. 
And I think they get it. I think they found the, the balance in how to use Isaiah Crowell to his strength. You don't have to run the ball at the center every time, but keep him in between the tackles. And trust me, he'll bounce it on his own if the hole's not there. But it's good to see him do power running with Crowell. Down the seam, McWilliams is wide open. Making a man miss, getting the block from Jones, and in a foot race, sets up first and goal. A.J. Clark hustled the tackle him and saved the touchdown, but not before 54 yards. When you do play action, all you want is the linebackers to freeze. And you see right there, number 52, Monte Rover, comes forward looking to stuff the run, and that allows T.C. McWilliams to get behind him. And what a great block by Landon Jones downfield that almost sprung McWilliams for the touchdown. Four catches, 91 yards for McWilliams, and that is the fourth completion of more than 25 yards today for Greg Jenkins. On first and goal, Crowell to the short side, spins out of a tackle and gets three, down to the three. Denzel Cotton laid the wood to him with Vernon Marshall there as well. He runs hard. I mean, he runs hard, and he can take a licking and keep on ticking. He runs a lot harder than when we saw him in September. Yeah, more comfortable with the offense. Knows where the hole is. Knows where his linemen or pulling guards are coming from. Here's, here he is again. And running through a defender. That's a touchdown. In for a touchdown. Wow. There was absolutely nothing there at all. He saw two burgundy defenders, lowered his shoulder, and wheeled himself into the end zone. I mean, they've got this place sticked out pretty good. Everything is flowing to the right, nowhere to go, lower the shoulder, take him for a ride, twist and turn, and cross the plane with the goal line. Isaiah Crowell is starting to get it done at Alabama State. Second touchdown of the day for the Georgia transfer. How about this? Alabama State with 21 in a row. Three and out for AM to begin the half, and then the Hornets march 71 yards in a hurry. They keep playing the drive. TC McWilliams getting free on the post. Set it up first down and goal before Corral finished it off. And he's like a hero. Been a hero. Took a heroic effort. Oh. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by McDonald's. Let's take a look at our Bring in the Flavor brought to you by McDonald's. are bringing the flavor brought to you by McDonald's Alabama A&M Alabama State in the 71st Magic City Classic and again dominated by the Hornets outgaining Alabama A&M 377 to 130 Lenses kick. And it's pride hesitates and will take an E you get into a spot for Alabama A&M here where you can't afford many more mistakes and you can't afford to punt it many more times. Yeah, out of their comfort zone. This is an offense that likes to use the running game in order to set up the passing game. Now you fall behind by 18 points. If you give up one more score, then it becomes pass only. So I think this drive right now is going to be crucial for them to stay within striking distance. You can still come out and run your original game plan at this point in the game, but the offense gets stalled, and Alabama State puts some more points on the board. Throw your game plan out the window, and it just become pass happy. Total of 11 yards, or 14 yards on their last 11 plays. Mason throwing down the seam behind Bobby Goldsby, who adjusted for his second catch of the day. 15 yards to the 40 for the senior out of Massachusetts. Great adjustment by Goldsby to go down and come up with that football. And that right there lets you know that. Deontay Mace is not playing his best football game of the year. The accuracy has not been there. Several times we've seen receivers have to readjust to catch the football. Alabama and a team that enjoyed its first 6-0 start since 1966 before losing to Alcorn State two weeks ago. Now needing to come from way behind to avoid back-to-back -back losses. Pressure up the middle, so they throw to the outside. 
But B. Jarnett's knee was down when he caught it for a loss of one, second and 11. And why was his knee down? Because of the inaccurate throw by Mason. He's not very accurate tonight throwing the ball where you can't, if you're a receiver, all you can do is go down and catch it. In college football, once your knee is down, it's down. I mean, that ball actually was incomplete. He skipped it there. I mean, what you have to do as a quarterback when you have days like this, you just have to fight through it. You got to get your muscle memory to kick in place. And it helps out if you start reading the coverages a little bit sooner. There's no instant replay at this level. Mason pressured and can't get away from Jimmy Daniels, who gets his team leading fifth sack of the season. And it's third and long. I like the sack. I like the effort. Good job of getting it done with the pressure on the quarterback. Takes the edge, holds on to it, grabs a little jersey, brings him down. I, I, I'm, I don't know about the dance. What, what, what are you thinking? Uh, <laughs> that looks like a modified version of the funky chicken. Yeah, not a fan. Maybe, maybe call it the barbecue chicken. <laughs> you call whatever you city. want today. <laughs> Seven tackles for loss today. They're third in the country. Racking those up. So third down and 19 for a Bulldogs team that is the best third down team in the conference because they get in so many short yardage third down situations. Floating it into an empty space and it's fourth down. Alabama State's defense, which has been such a disappointment this year, coming up with its best game so far. Putting it all together at the right time. This is the team that needs to win, and defensive coordinator Zach Thornton's got to be pleased with the play of this defensive unit. They have shut down one of the most feared offenses in the SWAT conference, and making it look pretty simple in the process. Welcome Cyrus. There's a flag down. I'm taking a flag. Lost it down at the previous spot. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. It's a five-minute rule. As long as you get the call within five minutes. <laughs> it's only the five like minutes. Yeah, and you see they're arguing. They're saying it was a screen pass, and they were trying to get the ball to Kadarius Lacey. He was somewhere close, but it was a good job by the Alabama State defensive line of holding him in place, not letting him get in position to catch the screen. Fourth down and 37. Alabama State's going to get excellent field position. Wilson already with his sixth punt today. Alabama State setting up a return that won't be needed. Shakes it near the 30. The Hornets having a heck of a time here at the Magic City Classic. Up 31 13. Now, maybe not the prettiest dance, but he's having fun. Looks like there's an opening for shipping coordinator, and I've got to pick someone. Tough decision. Okay, you could be a rising star, or. But you just ordered a crispy McChicken and a fresh brewed sweet tea for only a buck each off McDonald's dollar menu. So you're smart, right? Yeah, I got nothing. Smart man. Two sevens. Oh! Wow. The box strikes again. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Lexus. Introducing a stunning work of technology, the entirely new Lexus ES. Look at the Vulcan statue. Looking over 31-13 Alabama State lead. Early on in this third quarter. The largest cast iron statue in the world. It's 50 feet tall with its current pedestal 123 feet. Weighs 120,000 pounds, 60 tons. Created as Birmingham's entry for the 1904 Louisiana Purchase Expo in St. Louis. A representation of their steel production here in the Magic City. This has turned into a must-stop drive for Alabama A&M's nationally ranked defense. And a good start to it as Vernon Marshall slides off of the edge to get to swallow Malcolm Cyrus for a loss of two and it's second and 12. I really like Vernon Marshall. That's why we named him as the impact player. 5'11", 190 pounds, he plays weak side linebacker. At that type of size, he could be playing cornerback. But he's a physical enough football player, feels comfortable around the line of scrimmage. 
Second and 12, Jenkins off of the zone read, slipped the tackle and got five to the 34, and it's third and seven. Marshall with a tackle once again. And it's a good thing when you see Greg Jenkins running the football. I mean, for me, I think the excitement about Alabama State coming into the season was Greg Jenkins at quarterback, Isaiah Crowell at running back. Pick your poison. And now it seems like they're playing their best football on the season at the right time when the season's on the line every week for the remainder of the year. Empty set. Wanted to go to the shovel pass, but it wasn't there, so Jenkins will run to the 30. And he's three yards short. Had Justin Robinson coming over from his tight end spot, but the shovel pass was taken away. So fourth down and three. And, and I still think see, the way to beat Alabama and them is you've got to run straight ahead. They're just too quick, sideline to sideline, to beat them that way defensively, even with a very mobile quarterback like Greg Jenkins. We're going to try a field goal here, it appears. Not they'll send Bobby Wenzig back into punt formation. All he's made from 47 today, this would have been a 47-yarder. Choosing to play the field position game with his three-score lead. I don't know. I would have gone for it in this situation here. I mean, outside of the punt, the last thing I would do is punt. I'd either go for the field goal or I would go for it on fourth and three. You've got the wind blowing in that direction. Yeah, so you get a little bit extra leg out there. We know it's as long. He's had a good kick so far in this contest. And if you end up kicking the ball to the end zone, you net 10 yards. Wenzig, the nation's number two punter. It's a fake. The Mario Bell. Red shirts all around him. Alabama A&M comes up with a big play on special teams. Preston Nelson and Melvin Payne there with Marshall. I want you to remember that play. With seven minutes and 35 seconds to go in an 18-point lead, they go for the fake punt down in Alabama a territory. They're going to try and get a reverse. He's going to come around on an end around, but they just sniffed it out. Good job making him cut back to the inside, losing yardage. And that could be a momentum-changing play in this football contest. Credit to the Alabama A&M special teams trying to keep their team in this game. So the Bulldogs take over at the 38. It was a special teams play that proved to be the difference last year when Alabama A&M blocked an extra point, 120-19. to They've got a free play here. Mason trying to take advantage. Leaping is Monteria Smith. 14 yards into Alabama State Territory. What a job by Smith climbing the ladder to come down with that ball. That's the defense number 99. Penalty is the climb. He's also the play at the first down. Well, Terry Smith, the leading wide receiver for this Bulldog offense. You know you've got a free play, so you're not going to take a sack. He sees him coming across. Ball gets away from him, but that's a good job by your wide receiver, making your quarterback look good, son. Ontario Smith, the sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. He's playing at home game. So into Hornet territory for the first time in this half. Lacey downhill. Gets a couple of yards. That was a wounded duck, that throw there. And you hear people talking about how rain affects throwing the football, but cold weather can make it tough, too. Yeah, balls become harder, and they, they, so it's a little bit tougher. You have to have large hands. If you don't have extremely large hands, ball becomes slippery. You don't get a good grip. Were you a fingertip, fingertip on liquor to do that? <laughs> no, I'm going to dry. Okay. I'm going to dry, but every quarterback has to, but keep it dry. Second down, Mason Presser. Gets away from it and has some room making a man miss. Deontay Mason settles for eight yards, a yard short of the first down where Darius Knox shoved him out. And this is a great run by Mason. He's looking for us for going through his reads. Not there, but at the end of the run, your team is down by 18. You've got to see that first down marker, and you've got to sacrifice your body and die for it so you're not facing third down. I know you don't want your quarterback getting hit, Joe, but you've got to know where you're on the field, and you've got to make that extra play, particularly when you're trailing. One for seven on third down today. They're going to sneak it on third and two and get it, catching Alabama State off guard. 
That's a scout report. I mean, their, their favorite short yardage play is Deontay Mason, quarterback sneak. Behind Bryant Ross and Jamal Johnson Webb, whose name we've not said today, 6'5, 320 pound left tackle. What's his nickname? Dub. Dub because. Size 20 shoes. And they're all love size 20. <laughs> when you're looking at the linemen there, you see them all, the, you just look at the feet and you find Jamal Johnson Webb. The drive extended. All 11 men within eight yards of the line of scrimmage. Now Riley backs off and a flag down. Gives us a moment for Jay to give me five. Give me five, Joe. How about the five NFL prospects on the bubble? We're watching one. Kadarius Lacey, running back, AM, Kiwan Riley, Alabama State safety. You said he's the active leader in interceptions. Number four, Dub. Offensive line, he's got great size. Number three, Rogers Gaines, Tennessee State. We haven't seen him, but he's moving up. Number two, Teron Armstead, third offensive lineman. And number one, Keith Pugh, Howard University. Here's Lacey. Sticking the shoulder down, getting four. That's not biased, is it? Keith Pugh being the number one. Well, let me ask you the bias. He's, he's the number one career all time tackles for loss in FCS history. So even if I wanted to be biased, wouldn't that alone? <laughs> and he was the highest rated uh, HBCU prospect going into the season. I mean, Danny Woodhead is the all time leading rusher in college football history, and he wasn't a big prospect. He's playing in the NFL right now. He is. Okay, so I'm just playing thank devil's you for advocate. My case. <laughs> Second down and 13. I had to ask. You put a Howard guy up top. Mason looking to the short side. Terrence Pride thrown down by Saeed Lee. There's another flag down. On a gain of seven. For the record, I think Keith Pugh's pretty darn good, too. <laughs> okay. We saw him in Norfolk this September. So offsides on Alabama State. Give them five yards and make it second down and seven. Right now you've got the Bulldogs on the prowl. I think they're setting up the Alabama State secondary for the double move. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw another pump go, hitch and go route. Off play action, stepping into traffic and throwing high. Monteria Smith was wide open, but Mason got drilled. And could not wow. set his feet, could not step into his throw. And that was a, a touchdown saving hit delivered by Brandon Roberts, the middle linebacker for yeah. Alabama State. If he gets there a second soon, this is a touchdown. You're going to see Roberts coming. He recognizes it. Doesn't allow Mason to step in and set his throw. And step into the throw and wow, missed opportunity for Alabama A&M. They got the look that they were looking for, couldn't convert. So third and seven now. Straight four-man rush is picked off. Mason cannot get away from Draquay Everett, who's got his second sack of the season. Held out of the ball too long, and it's fourth and 11. I think they're, they're considering going for it right now. I think they've had some success getting some wide receivers open. They can protect the quarterback. The Alabama A&M receivers have been able to find holes in the zone defense being played by Alabama State. They converted their first three fourth downs of the season. They've gone four straight attempts without making one. On fourth down, they twist up front, but it's picked up. Mason with all kinds of time, thrown to the sideline, but well short of the first down. Pride is tackled by Stewart. Alabama State's defense bends, but it doesn't break. So a three-score lead for the Hornets here at Birmingham. The all-new Lexus ES comes with a story still untold. Places it will take you. Dreams it will make come true. With technology and style that match your achievements and desires. 
question is, where will your new ES take you? Alabama State dominating the 71st Magic City Classic. 31-13 the score, final minutes of the third quarter. Isaiah Crowell, they're now running back. National Signing Day a couple of years ago. Signed with Georgia out of Carver, Columbus, and did his best Lee Corso impression with a live animal there. Of course, the ICC freshman of the year a season ago before getting dismissed from the team this summer. And now, where I'm from, brought to you by the U.S. Marines. Out of Columbus, Georgia, who's the number one running back in the country coming out of high school. ICC freshman of the year. And was dismissed from that Georgia program coming here to Alabama State. He's been solid. He's gotten better and better. What has his transfer meant for this program? Put him on the map right away and kind of is now starting to give the offense an identity, a go-to running back, which they haven't had. Keep in mind, with going into the season, Alabama State last year had the worst rushing offense in the SWAT conference. Now, they're respectable running the football, and even if the numbers don't jump out on paper, the threat of Crowell in the backfield breaking a long one makes them a force to be reckoned with. Welcome Cyrus. In on this drive, got four on first down. Now Jenkins throwing high, and it's intercepted. A.J. Clark takes it away. Second of the season for the converted quarterback. Bad time to throw an interception if you're Greg Jenkins. Put this game away and lets the guy is wide open. I'm not even looking there. Throwing on the run, ball. On the inside, where Clark was actually in better position than the intended target. Good job by A.J. Clark. As you mentioned, the former quarterback. Concentration to come down on the interception. The ground game's been working so well for Alabama State. Are you surprised that they went away from it? I, I am. I mean, Crowell, they're giving Cyrus a number of carries as well. But it seems to me as if Alabama A&M has not found an answer for Isaiah Crowell. He's averaging over four and a half yards per carry. So they stopped a fake punt, could not take advantage. Now they get a takeaway. Can they take advantage of that? Mason Presser getting to the corner. Winds up getting a few yards out of it. Deontay Mason, during the six-game winning streak to begin the year for the Bulldogs, was four times the slack offensive player of the week. There's a flag down late there. That's Dijarnet call for the penalty. This is one you can't do it. You see it on the left side of your screen right there. Look at that. Oh, come on. That's a cheap shot. That's frustration. You're winning the game, and good job by the official. <laughs> On the spot to make the call. I mean, things aren't going your way. You got the ball in great field position. You, you're trying to get your thing, your offense going, some momentum, and you take it away with a bonehead play on the sideline. Second down and 21. That run, they had it inside the 35. Now from midfield. Here's DeJarnette, and he's called for the penalty. Getting thrown down after a gain of eight. There is Knox, along with Leland Baker. And it's third and 16. You've got to get a chunk of it here, right? You don't need all 16. And I think at this position, yeah, if you, if you pick up more than 10 yards, Coach Jones will probably go for it. Time's not on your side. We received the ball on a turnover anyway. So take advantage of the opportunity. I would think it's probably four down territory. Terrence Fry goes in motion to balance the formation. And twist up front, get pressure. Mason goes down. Jimmy Daniels does it again. A loss of 18. And this time he cut the dance out of the end. Uh, probably the recommendation of the coach is not to do that dance. And Jimmy Daniels, right up the middle, they run a twist and he gets a hand on Mason. 
Kind of gives a little, a little roll, huh? A little shake, rattle, and roll. Whatever it was, it was better than the other thing he did. So a block or a stop fake punt that they're unable to take advantage of. And now an interception inside the 40-yard line they're unable to take advantage of. On fourth and a third of the field, they send it away to Malcolm Cyrus. Another short punt on a nightmarish afternoon for Chance Wilson. Look at our State Farm. Get to a better state brought to you by State Farm, the defense for Alabama State. It's been all about the defense, the ability to figure out what Alabama AM was doing to them in the first quarter and make the adjustments. Look at that. Almost six yards per play since the first quarter. Cut that number in half. And that's why they've got this nice lead. And if you're doing well, uh, we'll help you get to a better state as well. Get you some dance moves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fourth sack of the game for Alabama State. Against an Alabama Adam offense that's protected the passer better than any other in the SWAC. Now trying to grind some clock. Crowell gobbled in the backfield. Lost a couple. Tim Tillman and Preston Nelson. And on the stop. Hornets will be content with that. Ending this third quarter and Kadarius Lacey. In large part because Alabama has been so far behind has been taken out of this game. Yeah, which is surprising because he's been a good player for him, the main focal point of this offense. Alabama State has won just two of the last 14 Magic City Classics. Reggie Barlow is undefeated as a player. But his one and four as a coach is victory number two in the classic 15 minutes away. <laughs> ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. I'm loving all that other stuff cooking out there. Those definitely look like two all beef patty. Maybe 20 of them. There is food everywhere you go. Whole pork, you said in there. Man. Take a look at it. This is what you want right here. Fresh <laughs> out the. Good, oh. good job. 31 13 as we go to the fourth. 21 in a row for Alabama State. Trying to get just their third win in the last 15 seasons in the Magic City Classic. Look at that. I mean, that's the one right there. Ten tackles for a loss behind the line of scrimmage, including four sacks. First play of this fourth quarter is an incomplete that's pass from Jenkins, who after he let it go, kind of moved his arm in a windmill motion as if to say I'm a little bit tight here in this cold weather, not throwing very often. It's going to be tough to throw the ball. I mean, it was cold down there, and now, He's throwing into the wind, so you've got to step into your throws a little bit more as a quarterback. And I think right now, fourth quarter, you're up by 18. Game management is the key. Game management is the key. You can't afford the turnover to let AM have good field position and run the football. Third down and 13. Jenkins setting the shoulders and going to Demario Bell, who stopped short of the first down. Jamel Morris with the tackle after a gain of nine. And try and attack the edge, and the Bulldogs do a good job of not allowing Jenkins to get on the corner. It's actually Derek Harris with the stop. AM's defense has done a good job in this second half. It's been the offense that's been unable to get anything going. Bobby Wenzig's punt. A short one. Bounce out of bounds at the 21. So a punt of 39 yards. Let's take a look at Jay's HBCU power rankings. You know, I keep telling you, you got to give me some enthusiasm. Give me five. 
power rankings. Hey, give me some power. Right, just give me five, though. Power. <laughs> give me some power. Give it Alabama to me. Alabama State, number five. They're trying to get in. They may move in there. Number five, North Carolina Central. Number four, Alabama A&M. Now, you see I have them both highlighted, so only one of those teams will be there next week. Number three, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Just call them Steady Eddie. They keep winning. Number two, Thune Cookman. I'm sticking with Bethune Cookman number two, which means number one is still Tennessee State in spite of the loss in overtime to Jacksonville State at Jacksonville State. I took all those things into consideration, and I still think that Tennessee State's the best team in HBCU football. David Isabel, who's the backup quarterback, takes the handoff on what might have been a design handoff and throw, but everybody covered downfield. Brandon Roberts for the tackle, 7-7. Seven and seven. Right now is going to be the time where you've got to come out and shotgun. I would go hurry up offense down by 18 points. Not the time to walk around. You have to have a sense of urgency right now if you're a Bulldog player. Three score game early on in this fourth quarter. Isabel stays in and running back. Mason off a straight drop will throw to him out of the backfield, showing good athleticism. To get out to the 40. That's 15 yards and a first down. And that's been one of the better throws by Deontay Mason this evening. Hitting the receiver in stride as he came out of the break. Catchable ball. Spotted at the 42. Isabel still in there as a running back. Deep drop, pressured, and we'll throw it to the sideline, short of the line of scrimmage. That should be intentional grounding. Carlton Jones got to him for what would have been the fifth sack of the day for Alabama State. I agree with you. It's got to be one or the other. I think it should be either the sack or intentional grounding. There's nobody near where he throws it. Yeah, I mean, you see Carlton Jones with the pressure. Does he get rid of it? I mean, maybe they say he threw it out of bounds. Okay. But not to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Second and ten. Quarterback draw. Nowhere to go. Carlton Jones and this defensive line have been tremendous. Maurice Tate was there out of the middle linebacker's spot. No gain, and it's third and ten. They're beating him up right now. I mean, the defensive line for Alabama State has been too much for the offensive line of Alabama A&M to handle right now. Offensive coordinator Cedric Pearl for Alabama A&M, what do you do? You know, it's kind of tough when they're only rushing four and they'll bring the occasional blitz with Roberts. I mean, you can't block another team's defensive line. Very limited in your play selection. Third down and 10, pressured again. We'll throw it for pride, but skipped it, and it's fourth down. It's just four down territory at this point. Yeah, I mean, you got to pick your poison. You're down a distance. Knowing them the way they are, though, they probably think on special teams they can turn over. If you got fourth and 10, then I would go ahead and kick it away. Fourth and anything less than seven or six, I think, for the rest of the game it is. I'm having a hard time grasping this. And Joe, if you can help me, can you believe that up till two weeks ago, Alabama a was a number two ranked team in all HBCU football. They've not looked like it today. I don't think they took the loss to Alcorn seriously. When you talk to them, they said, oh, we turned the ball over. It was homecoming. We were distracted. I think the realization is you got beat. You might have gotten exposed as well. Now, that ball hit Vernon Marshall in the foot, so it should be down where it hit him at about the 15. Nobody's saying that. Dotted inside the two. A lot of good food around the stadium, and we're going to go tailgate with Jim when we come back. Oh, man, this ought to be fun. Some ribs. That way, I'm going to find some ribs. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, baby. I got all my food groups here. I got some pork, I got some chicken, I got some corn, I got some potato salad green, I got some dessert waiting for me over there too. Now we're talking. Watch it. Watch it. I'm gonna go out and find the best piece of barbecue I can. Come on. Oh, 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 oh,
Thomasville, Alabama is in the house, and Jay Walker is full. Oh, All right, do you have a favorite food that you've had in your entire time coming to the Magic City Classic? Been variety. The gumbo one year was good. I will say this, and I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna hold it back. When I bit into that, that was probably the best cookout rib I've had in my life. Hmm. It was that good. It was no you sauce talking needed. Just today? Yes. That bite. It was perfect temperature. It was juicy. I have to give my man credit. He was throwing down on that grill. Brownie Cross, eight and a half on first down. We were talking about this kick. It looked like that Vernon Marshall hit it, and he did. So that's why the ball was spotted at the 22 to begin the drive instead of the one. Cross bobbles the handoff. He's able to recover it, then runs into Preston Nelson. They said that he was down. No game, third and two, and Alabama A&M's got to get a stop. They need a stop, and he bobbled the handoff. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a fumble because he was bobbling the ball. He's got it there. He doesn't have... Oh, he was down. He was down there. So third and two, they bring Corral into the game and running back. They give it to him. He didn't get it. Alabama A&M's defense doing the job again. They made some adjustments at halftime. Alabama State has only scored seven points in the second half, but unfortunately the offense has not been able to get it done. And through it all, Coach Jones has got to be thinking, what can I do to jumpstart the offensive unit? Well, Monterius Smith is back to receive this punt, and he's like 60 yards downfield. And he hits an Alabama A&M player, but he gets on top of it. Inside of the 35. It's Jermaine Shepard. He's lucky to fall right on top of it. Well, big news today, Marcus Lattimore injured against Tennessee. That's a tough one right there for the Gamecocks. You know, you feel sorry for the, for the kid. You know, got injured last year, was just getting back into form, and this happens. Not Louisville. Teddy Bridgewater, I told you earlier, I like him. I like Teddy Bridgewater. It Did it in the rain last night. Be named next week. Seven punts and a failed fourth down in the last eight possessions for Alabama A&M. They're at a spot where they probably can't have a drive fail again. No, I think that was probably two or three drives ago. They're fortunate that Alabama State's offense seems to have stalled as well. But it all for them, it all starts, can they protect their quarterback? Four-man rush, are you going to be able to keep them off of Deontay Mason? Off play action, taking a shot for Dijarnett. Defended by Darius That's Knox, and the flag comes in late. So that'll move the ball to midfield on a 15-yard penalty. We'll take that. We'll it. Dijarnett, good job of recognition. And watch him come back and fight for the football. Clearly, Darius Knox didn't know where the ball was. Knox Redshirt, sophomore to Baton Rouge, has really been playing well lately. He's had a good day today. How about that? 20 of their 48 players have gone for nothing or less than nothing. That is offensive futility. From the 49, they bring pressure out of the linebacking core, and it opens up the middle for Smith, who couldn't hang on. And Mason just has not been very accurate today. Not accurate, and also he's been hit so much because of the pressure, not trusting his offensive line. They bring pressure, but it's picked up. So he was almost going backwards when he threw that ball. Step into the throw. 14 to 22 for him. He's not been intercepted, but he's not had any big plays in the passing game. At one of their first drive to Bobby Goldsby for 47 yards, but that's about it. On second down, 
Third and ten. Yeah, I feel for him. I mean, he's just not having a good day at the office right now. And, and you, you can tell, you just you know, look at his his body mannerisms. I mean, not a very confident quarterback right now. The one thing you have to have as a quarterback is your confidence. They're two for ten on third down today. It's been a big part of the story as well. Haven't been able to extend any drives, but many of the third downs have been long. Batted at the line of scrimmage, and it's fourth and ten. You see that shot that Dijonette just yeah. put on the defensive back? Easily could have gotten called for a penalty. Easily could have gotten called for it. He's such a talented young man. And you see here, this is a good job of getting a hand on the ball by the defensive end. Jimmy Daniels can't get to the quarterback jump, and then when the ball's on the ground, takes a cheap shot on him. It's not called for it. I don't understand how the official didn't call, him a penalty, call for a penalty. They're going to punt. And boy, the bad body language from Mason has gone to terrible body language. Throws his helmet when he gets off of the field. Oh, and this doesn't look good. I mean, you got Coach Jones getting to a shout match with his quarterback, the rest of the offense. Said the Magic City Classics he remembers most are the ones that they lose. Sticks with you for an entire year. Malcolm Cyrus back to receive a good punt from Wilson. And takes a fair catch at the 11. I'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll. The Jays Heisman favorites right now. Manti Teo with a big stage tonight against Landry Jones in Oklahoma. First Magic City Classic in all Alabama State. Getting into that time of year where the Heisman race is heating up, and it feels like this year, Jay you know, Geno Smith was head and shoulders above everybody for a while, and then two losses knocked him off. Colin Klein seems to be that guy right now, but. I'm a guy I think somebody's going to emerge. You talk about Van Teo with an opportunity tonight to showcase his skills. And, you know, I like the dark horse. I really do believe that if Landry Jones does a good job, one of whoever wins that game with the Notre Dame Oklahoma, their star player is going to be in the highest trophy hunt. Five down on first down. What does it take for a defensive player to win the Heisman? Special plays in a story. And I think Teo's had a good story this year. Charles Woodson won it. Hey, he was the fact that he also played offense as well. That was a story. He was just a tremendous athlete. Now that, that's my version of it. What do you think in terms of Heisman Trophy? I think if Notre Dame is able to go undefeated or 11 and one, and he has a big game either against Oklahoma or USC on big stages, and you know, assuming nobody else offense. takes and runs with it. Penalties decline. Second down. You get an offensive player though that takes and runs with it. A defensive player is not going to win it. Yep. I agree. You know, the tie goes to the offense. Yeah. I, I think that case, but unless there's a unique story, something else that you notice, every person we've talked about winning the Heisman, no running backs. I mean, you know, the Anthony Thomas was probably the only one. And you had uh, a Montu Ball at Wisconsin. He kind of went by the wayside. He's trying to get back in it, though, by breaking some records. Here's Corral on second down. Marcus Lattimore, I thought, would have been the running back had he had a good year and he had a good run this season. But I think that's something that's going to become the norm moving forward because of the spread offense, because the quarterbacks now run the ball in some offenses just as many times as the running backs. I don't know what it's going to take for a running back to actually win the Heisman Trophy again. Speaking of spread quarterbacks, how about Johnny Manziel? The, the freshman, that's the one. That's the one. Can, can, can a freshman get it done? Texas A&M quarterback. They're taking on Auburn not too far from here tonight. Third down, and Jenkins has the seized part. Still let him get a first down. Alabama A&M's defense giving him every shot to get back into this game, but the offense has just one first down in the second half. You know, normally you would say this is a good effort. 
you know, defense is doing well, but the offense is so splintered. They're pointing fingers at each other on the sideline. This is where you need C leadership to step up and say, it's now or never. Wenzig with a good punt. Ontario Smith will give Alabama AM good field position. Right now, the dog's out in front. When you look at the East standings for Alabama State, they've got to be perfect, and they need Jackson State to lose once because by virtue of the 34-31 win two weeks ago for Jackson State, they've got the tiebreaker with Alabama State. And I think the only thing you can take out of this if you're Alabama A&M is, you know, if you can just win out, you're still in contention. Disappointing. So we saw Alabama State play with the sense of urgency, realizing they must win all their games. We did not see that from Alabama A&M. Anthony Jones said last Saturday that they were, or two Saturdays ago, they were overconfident against Alcorn. Tried to guard against it, but these are young kids. Nice throw on first down to David Isabel, the backup quarterback with his second catch, and it's second and six. What about the job Monty Coleman's done at Arkansas Pine Bluff? I mean, what you really like about them, the game they're supposed to win, they're winning, and they're making it look easy. And the one loss they have in conference play came to Alabama and m and they were beat 14 to 10, but Alabama and m made two four-down goal line stands to secure the victory. And today, if they were to play today, I don't know if that would be the case. They've got a really good football team in Pine Bluff. Into traffic looking for pride, and it's third and six. Well, I'm not so sure that that Mason's not injured with that, with that shoulder. I mean, the release point on this, he has a naturally low release, but look at the release point on it when he throws the ball. It's like it's not even coming above you know, his helmet. That's a real low one, and he's skipping balls all over the place. And you can see the result of the pressure that he's faced all day, too, falling off to his side as he throws it. Third and six. Pressure again. And Mason flips it wildly to the sideline. It's fourth down. Pressure from Maurice Tate out of the linebacker blitz. Guy that four straight weeks is the SWAC's offensive player of the week during that six game winning streak to begin the year. SWAC's leader in passing efficiency. And a guy that a lot of people coming into today looked at as maybe the SWAC offensive MVP. He would have gotten my boat if the season were have ended today. And Alabama State takes over. Well, so we start talking about SWAC offensive play of the year. I think Benji Anderson, quarterback, Arkansas Pine Bluff, is probably in the driver's seat. We'll take a look. This is at the beginning of the game. It's throwing motion there. Just want you to take a look. And where that ball's nice release, nice arc this way. Now let's take a look and see how he's throwing the ball on his very last play. Drop it back, take a look. Look at it. That, that, look at that elbow. I mean, that elbow is coming down here. That ball's barely above the helmet. And that's why he's been skipping passes, having balls deflected. Jenkins throwing on the move for Landon Jones. Couldn't hang on. Why? Yeah. Seven minutes, 15 seconds. You got offense, can't do anything. You know, as a quarterback, I love throwing the football, but some bad things can happen <laughs> when you try and drop back and pass. You can get sat, you can throw an interception. In this case, you can stop the clock, you move the ball to the sideline. Now you're stopping the clock. Get in that formation where you bring in those two tight ends, let them serve as fullback, and pound the football. Now with seven seconds to go, are they going to take a delay of game? They don't even have the team up to the line of scrimmage. A 
looking ahead for the Hornets, and again, they need to be perfect down the stretch. Only two of those games count. Right. Tuskegee is not a member of the SWAC conference. Very winnable games. Prairie View is struggling this year. We saw Southern University. They're struggling as well. The only tough part of this schedule is the fact that those two games are on the road at Prairie View, at Southern. So they've got to have that road focus that you have to have. And then on Thanksgiving Day, you and I will be there when they open new ASU Stadium. 26,000, perfect capacity for Alabama State campus and a beautiful facility. But it'll be a lot of fun to open up. Very beautiful. And it goes along with the program they've done at Alabama State. New baseball facility, new softball facility. Alabama State has made an investment in athletics, which many people feel has been long overdue. And I'm excited about Thanksgiving. It's going to be fun. Turkey Day. I will give you an interesting nugget. Tuskegee doesn't care that they're Division II and Alabama State is FCS. Tuskegee goes in there with the mindset, we're going to win this football game every year. And one year, when Alabama State won the SWAC, they lost to Tuskegee. And didn't they print T-shirts that said SWAC champs? SWAC champs. And Tuskegee, correct me if I'm wrong here, but they forfeit the right to play in the playoffs by playing that game. Yes. Jenkins keeps it. They're down. At the end of the play here. 91 Philip Harvey swiping at the ball. A little bit chippy. That's what defensive linemen do. <laughs> you know, yes, I'm biased. I'm not the biggest fan of defensive linemen. <laughs> Greg Jenkins injured. Out of the game now. So Daniel Duhart comes in. Six and a half to go and hands it off to Malcolm Cyrus. Get a yard and stay in bounds. Preston Nelson with the tackle. It's fourth and five. On the field comes Bobby Winsick. We've gotten to know him very well tonight. Plenty of punts. And, and once again, you would normally say, okay, Alabama and them, they have to get it done. They haven't figured it out all night. There's no reason to think that they're going to do it now. That is Jenkins. This one well intact, but you talk about needing to be perfect down the stretch. It's a guy you've got to have available. That's 14 plays for Alabama State, 21 total yards. Line drive kick, taking a heck of a bounce, and they're going to pin it at the one. Bobby Wenzig, one of the nation's top punters, pins it inside the five and a 45-yarder. BCS countdown is on ESPN and ESPN in the top 10. It is one as a whole. Morgan with a 70 to 14 win today over Colorado. Mario Ross couldn't hold on. You got to be able to score 70 points a week to impress people. I mean, it looks like it if you keep winning and dropping. I think if you're in a conference that's not called the SEC, yes. In the SEC, if you squeak out a 12-11 victory, they don't drop you and take style points from you. They say it's a competition in the opponent. But outside, it's almost like if you're not in the SEC, you almost have to be a, a BCS buster. Mason pressured in the end zone. He'll get out of the end zone and work hard to get across the five. Got four yards. Third and six. I'm still, I'm still under the notion that the team you got to watch out for is going to be LSU. Really? Well, for, some, for some reason, I, I think they're just going to they're going to string together a couple, and the Mad Hatter's always going to find a way to to make it interesting to say the least. So they'll have Alabama at home, and if they were able to win that game, theoretically, they'd then go play in the SEC championship. And you think? Hypothetically, those two wins would get him into the championship. It could. Be very interesting. There's Tory Smith for a first down. Well, obviously, an 18 point deficit with four and a half to go. What's Alabama AM have to gain? to gain some pride. Yeah. You know, you've got to go out there 
and work on some things. If your offense is obviously having some struggles, don't just assume, okay, that team went out there and outplayed us. They've got to figure out what their best brand of football is because they can still come here in Birmingham and win the SWAC championship if they win the rest of the season. So I think right now, even during this game, you're working right now to see, hey, if our passing game is struggling, why are we struggling? I'm looking to see the effort. That's pride. That's what Alabama A&M has left. Of course, that so, game at Auburn won't impact the SWAC standings, but Southern at home and then at Jackson State, which is tough. And keep in mind, Jackson State will probably come into their contest with saying it'll be an elimination game as well, too. Whoever loses that game will be out of SWAC contention, so that's going to be the one there. Playing Southern at home helps playing at home. With Jackson State coach Rick Comagy, he's got the Tigers now starting to play their best football. Now Alabama State and Jackson State, both 4-2 and two coming into the game, but Jackson State with the tiebreaker of those two teams were to finish tied because of their 34-31 win against the Hornets two weeks ago. You get into a spot now for Alabama A&M where you need to win out and hope that Alabama State loses because Alabama State will have the tiebreaker. There aren't any games on there that you say they should lose. And that will be the mark if they're a good team. And keep in mind, many people said they were going to be the best team in the SWAC conference. They've hit a couple stumbles on the road. But at the end of the day, Coach Barlow still has his team with a chance to win a SWAC crown. Terrence Pride off of the field now. Lacey gets him a first down. Because Alabama A&M was behind for so much of this game, Lacey's had a quiet day. And you say that he scored two touchdowns. The right. only touchdowns they have, but they were able to take him out. They still had opportunities in the third quarter to really get him involved, but with the quarterback play not being up to par tonight, no Darius Lacey is consequence. And just four carries in the second half for him. It was a perfectly thrown ball to Dijarnet. Across midfield to the 45. And Martin with the coverage. 22 yards. Mason trying to get back into rhythm and get some confidence coming out of this thing. Working for the rest of the season. That's what you're trying to do right now. That ball tipped and still almost caught by Dijar now, but it's broken up at the last moment by Martin. And you can tell coming to the game, that was going to be the game plan. If you cannot get to Deontay Mason, leave your feet. Because of the sidearm delivery, and when he drops the elbow, you can tip the balls. And we've seen Alabama State do that several times tonight. Second down and 10 on what has turned into a chilly night here in Birmingham. Mason taking a shot looking for Dijarnet again, but it's out of bounds and more good coverage from Martin. Well, there might have been some people that picked Alabama State, but I don't think anybody would have sent Alabama State by three touchdowns. A three touchdown win for Alabama State. You think anybody expected that? No. I mean, you look at the history of the game. You know, this normally doesn't happen. This is a game where something crazy normally determines the outcome of bobble, punt, block punt, missed extra point. And Alabama State came in and put in a very impressive performance. It's a familiar scene, Mason scrambling and throwing fourth down. He's been under siege all day. And this is one here as a quarterback where You've got to sacrifice your body. You're rolling to your left. Once he gets out of the pocket, you know you've got to square those shoulders to the right in order to get the ball downfield, but you've got a D lineman that's bearing down on you. He steps into that throw knowing he was going to be in the middle of an Alabama State Hornet sandwich. You got all this good food here, and you talk about a Hornet sandwich. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I will be on, on the diet for the next three years with all the food I've managed to eat over the past 48 hours. 
Get it snapped just in time for this fourth down play. Stewart can't get him down. Mason looking back across his body. Dejarnet lays out but can't get it. And Alabama State takes over. Great effort from both Mason and Dejarnet on that play and on that entire drive. Dejarnet slow getting up. And this is the chemistry that you want to have on the run. Ball just tails from him a little bit. Dejarnet. Had an opportunity to come down with it, but just, just look at what Mason does. It's just one of those days. Well, there's a new late night show on ESPNU. Perfect nightcap here, Sports Day. Unite, ESPN night on weeknights. And the Duhart stays in it running back and gives to Rodney Cross running some clock as he runs it over the 45. Duhart, quarterback, is a freshman from Georgia who they're very high on. Actually, we talked to offensive coordinator Fred Kice about him. He said he's had such a good camp going into the year. He knew it was going to be tough to get him in games because he expected Jenkins to have a big year, but they think that his future is extremely bright down in Montgomery. Jenkins is senior, so this would be it for him and Duhart. Aren't they going to be the guy moving forward? Rodney Cross getting some space. Horse collar inside the 40 that are moving down past the 25. Thirteen yard round with a fifteen yard penalty likely coming. I'm having some problems here in Anthony Johnson's microphone. Yeah. So it's a face mask. Face mask and a horse collar. You get 30 <laughs> yards for that. They're on Rice. Call for the penalty. <laughs> so you uh, you got you got an RV here this weekend, right? You experience it a little bit differently. Oh, so that's the way to go. Yeah. You know, for years you always heard about John Madden traveling on the Madden Cruiser. I see why. I mean, everything's right there. You've got neighbors in the parking lot. They become your extended family for a couple of days. So where are we at next week? We're at Athens, Ohio on Thursday. You coming in an RV? Uh, I don't know because they can't barbecue like that because the weather's going to be a little bit cold. Was this really the best? It was. You look ever look at the face. I'm like, I'm, I'm not expecting much because you don't know. And then when you bite it, look. Pulled it and looked at it. You see, I looked at it. You oh, see the stand? Oh, he's melting. <laughs> you see the stand? That's how you know something's Slow good. motion. When you look back at it and you look and you say, did I taste what I just thought I tasted? I love watching you eat in slow motion, too. <laughs> as if to, as if you needed more animation yeah, right. from me, right? Right. Should have done that Zoom thing they do on close plays. <laughs> no, thank you. So you tell me they're not going to have anything like that in Athens, Ohio. You know what? They can try. I mean, even if we were going to Texas, I don't know if I would taste a better rib than I just tasted. Might be bigger. I'm going to find something for you, Joe. This is over. We're going to let you be the judge. Ohio comes into the day in the top 25. It'll be part of a doubleheader on Thursday on the U. The Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky meet up 9-15 Eastern. I'm excited about seeing Ohio. Mm -hmm. Tyler Tettleton. Everybody kind of took notice of the Bobcats after the opening season victory versus Penn State. But they haven't stopped winning since. Demetri Price, third quarterback into the game for Alabama State. Rodney Cross with another carry. Lost the yard. Denzel Cotton with the tackle. That's all right. You bring in Demetri Price. Let him get into the game. He's from Birmingham, Alabama. The third string guy didn't expect to play. 
It's a quality move. Give him a snap in front of his folks. Good job, Reggie Barlop. So Reggie Barlow gets his second win in the Magic City Classic in six tries. And Alabama State now in the driver's seat for a SWAC East Division title. 31-13, the final score. Hornets win the 71st Magic City Classic. New Pink Lemonade 5-Hour Energy? 5-Hour Energy supports the Avon Foundation for Women Breast Cancer Crusade. So I can get the energized feeling I need and support a great cause? Time now for more analysis on tonight's game with the HBCU Post Game Report brought to you by Lexus. 31-13, Alabama State gets the job done in the 71st Magic City Classic. We welcome you back into the broadcast booth alongside Jay Walker, Joe Davis on hand. We talked today about this Alabama State defense that had struggled this season. High expectations coming in, but they've underwhelmed. Now you look at the numbers that they produced today. 28 plays out of the 59 against the Alabama State defense. No gain or for loss. It all started with the play of the defensive line for Alabama State. I think they came in here and manhandled the offensive line for Alabama a &M. Deontay Mason was running for his life, and more importantly, they were able to neutralize Kadarius Lacey, the best running back in the SWAC conference. They really got it done down in the trenches, dominating the line of scrimmage, therefore dominating the Alabama A&M offense. And Jimmy Daniels, defensive end, the defensive MVP. Not a very good dancer, but he's got a trophy to take home. Greg Jenkins, quarterback for Alabama State, the offensive MVP. 29 rushing yards for Alabama a &M. That stands out. You know, in the big games, the Alabama a &M offense did not show up today, and that was the difference maker right there. A talented running back like Kadaris Lacey, he's got to have more than 29 yards rushing himself. It was a tough one there, tough to explain, and now all of a sudden Alabama a &M goes from controlling their own destiny to they're going to need some help if they want to come back here to Birmingham for the SWAC title. And now it's Alabama State who, in a way, controls its own destiny, needs one thing to happen with Jackson State, but has the tiebreaker over a &M. And it's interesting, the way the football season is progressed in 2012, Alabama State was the favorite to make it to Birmingham in the SWAC championship. They stumbled, but now it seems like they're playing their best football at the right time of year. All right. Once again, our final score, 31-13, Alabama State wins. That's it for the HBCU postgame report, brought to you by Lexus. Now let's go to Sports Center U or Matt Sick, Jason Seahorn, and Charles Arbuckle have the latest news.